So I'm going to make a little tutorial on how to color in Clip Studio Paint. Um, a lot of tutorials out there don't really show you in detail what you're supposed to be doing. Um, I'm here to share a few tips and tricks as well. But this is for people who are beginners at digital art and are looking for how to sell shade. Um, if you don't want to sell shade instead of want to do more painty art style, I will do a video on that if asked. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Um, enjoyed the video. Okay, since none of the audio for the video I took for this recorded, I'm recording it separately. So I might miss a few things that I said in the original video, so please bear with me. So, now that we have our line art here, um, uh, I didn't do a tutorial on how to do line art. Uh, you can probably figure it out yourself, it's kind of self-explanatory, but the pen I use for line art is called a texture pen, and I will be showing it on the screen right now. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make a layer underneath your line art layer and color it all in one color. Uh, I use, you can use gray, but I use a reddish gray color because I feel like that's not a color you're going to probably be using in the painting. So the reason why we do this is so we can see if we are coloring over something like the skin color isn't going over the clothes and that's kind of hard to see sometimes, especially if the clothes and the skin are both a bright color. And then you'll be able to see that the skin is overlaying it. But this really won't be a problem if you select all of the area that you're coloring. So I honestly don't know why I do it at this point. So as you can see, I had some trouble trying to erase all the reddish color from the background. Uh, make sure all of your line art on the outside is closed so that won't happen to you. And now that we have only our character colored in with the reddish gray, uh, we're going to make a layer above that. Well, not layer, but a folder above that. And you can name it uh, base colors. I usually don't do that. I just have one single folder. But you can name the uh, folder if that's what you do and it keeps everything more organized. Next thing we're going to do is going to clip the uh, folder, which... What that does is so it uses the layer on the bottom as a reference layer. So I'm going to show you right here. So when, let's take a color like red, it doesn't go outside of the uh, lines. So that now I'm going to start putting in my base colors. So I'm going to select the hair and the eyebrows and I usually keep the hair on the top layer. Then I'm going to color it in uh, red. So now everything is colored in red, and I can deselect. Make sure everything is colored in, because as you can see, I had a spot missing over here. So just make sure all of your stuff is colored in. Oh, I'll also be showing the uh, select tool. You want to have it have the same settings as mine, so it won't um, look shitty when you <laughs> uh, use the bucket tool to color everything in. Now we're going to start adding in all the base colors. So this is a pretty simple process. Just add in all the colors that you need to. And I think I'll uh, skip through this part. All right. Mm -hmm. So now we have all of our uh, base colors colored in. So next thing we are going to do is we're going to uh, start adding a gradient to everything. So you're gonna go to your hair layer first and lock transparent pixel and that does basically the same thing as the um, what I showed you earlier with the clipping except for it will only go on the hair layer. So I'm gonna show you that's too hard to comprehend. I'm gonna show you uh, basically what that does. So what I do is uh, I take a dark color, like uh, for the hair, I'm using a dark purple at the bottom, 
and a orange color at the top of the hair to give it this really cool sunset gradient look. And now for the uh, skin color, I'm going to add pink to the cheeks, the nose, and a little bit on the chest area. I also add a little bit of pink under the eyes. Uh, this kind of makes him look tired, looks like he has bags under his eyes. And then after that, I will <clears throat> take a watercolor tool. I'm using opaque watercolor. Oh, and I forgot to mention this earlier, but by the way, when you're doing the gradients, use the airbrush tool. Now we're going to do the same to the uh, clothes as well, so don't forget to do that. So the next thing we're going to do is color in the whites of the eyes. Uh, you probably shouldn't be doing this on the same layer as your skin color, but I do it all the time by accident. So make sure you make another layer over your skin color to add the whites into the eyes. So now that we've added the whites in the eyes, make another layer above the skin layer and take a, a black color, basically black, it doesn't need to be black, it can be gray, and just color in the shading of the eyes. Uh, you don't need to do this, I do this, and it will make more sense when I change the opacity of the layer. So now we're going to hide that layer for now, and we're going to make a layer above it. And now we're going to color in our eye color. I chose blue, because blue looks really nice with red. And the way I color my eyes is pretty simple, um, nothing too special, so I'm not really going to explain it much. So I color in the pupils of the eyes in a darker color. Now make sure you slide the color wheel, like for example, if you're coloring blue, you want to shade in purple. So now that we've done that, we're going to create another layer above it called add and change the layer mode to add glow. Uh, so that, and we're going to change the opacity to around 30-ish percent. And then I'm going to choose a bright color, like, for example, I chose a bright purple. And then we're going to color in some shinies into the eyes. It's like all, uh, that's like the only way I can explain them, honestly. Once I've done that, I'm going to take the layer we made earlier with the, with the black shading, and I'm going to change the opacity to around 50%. And then I'm going to make a layer above that and add a uh, shiny to the top of the eyes, just so it's the, it's a, make sure it's above and not under, or else it'll get covered by the gray layer. So now they have done that done, we're going to close our folder, and we're going to make a layer above the folder. And we're going to change the uh, layer mode to uh, multiply. What that does is it makes it so the color that you're using changes depending on what color is under it. So I will show you what color I'm using. Since this uh, piece has a color scheme of kind of red, I'm going to choose red, but it, like let's say your character is mostly purple, like has a purple color scheme, you're going to do uh, purple instead. Now that I have chosen the color I want, I'm going to speed through the video of me shading. Uh, make sure you have a decent knowledge on how shading works before even attempting to do this. If you have a decent knowledge on shading, uh, this probably won't be too difficult to make it look nice. If you don't have any knowledge on shading, I suggest you highly suggest you look up a tutorial on how to shade human faces, stuff like that. That everything is shading shaded <laughs> you're gonna want to a uh, get rid of the background so now the background is transparent and you're going to uh, save the image uh, you probably should have been saving between intervals but you're gonna save the image as a P PNG so make sure any finishing changes you need to make to the image do it before you uh, close it and reopen it again just to make sure, you know. 
So now that you have your image with all the layers merged together and the background is transparent, first thing you're going to do is select the image and you're going to make a copy of the image on top of it. So there'll be a layer on top of it with the image on it. And the next thing you're going to do is select the top layer or just have the top layer. Go to the filters and you're going to choose blur and ca Caucasian blur. And you're going to blur it by about 180%. I think that number is the percentage. I'm not sure, but you're going to slowly wait for the computer to blur it. Obviously, I'm going to speed this up so it's not as slow. So then you have two options. You can change the layer mode to soft light, or you can change it to hard light depending on the effect that you are looking for. Personally, I like using hard light more than soft light, but to each their own. And then you can change the opacity depending on what you prefer. I'm going to go about 87 opacity, or 80, somewhere in the 80s, you know. So now that we've done that, we're going to choose a texture. Obviously, you can Google textures. I like using a ice texture that I found on Google. Uh, you can find them and just overlay them on your picture. So now that you have your texture, you're going to select it and paste it onto your image and make it so it fits the image, the entire uh, canvas. And once you've done that, you're going to hide it and you're going to select on the bottom layer, not the blurred layer, the bottom layer, you're going to select the outline of the character. And then you're going to go back to the ice texture layer, unhide it, and press clear on the uh, via select mode. And then you'll have a texture on your image after you've changed it to soft light. So you're going to change the texture of the, the layer, the, the texture layer is on, you're going to change it to soft light. The layer, layer mode, you're going to change it to soft light. <laughs> God, what a tongue twister. And that's pretty much all I do when I color. I hope this helped somehow. Thanks for watching the video.